I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and a Real Success. And I'd like to start off today by just sharing with you uh, the wonderful privilege that I personally had over the years because I grew up in five different countries and actually speak uh, four different languages. And what's interesting about that is it allows you to have a completely different perspective of what life is really all about, what people are really all about. And what I found fascinating in my particular case is seeing how things in one country uh, were absolutely opposing to what was in a different country and knowing that each was right. And so as I would look at my life around me, I would look at it as embracing the differences. You know, in this world today, we all try to be equal. Well, guess what? We're not equal. And the beauty of our life today is that we are so different. Because in my opinion, in my world, that's truly the genesis of our, our creativity. It's truly the genesis of progress in the world. The challenge is, is that too often, we are faced with challenges that are very scary, that really potentially compromise or sacrifice our lives in, in so many different ways. I mean, just look what's happening in the world around us. And so many unfortunate cases happen. And so how do we survive this? And so we can look at it from a personal perspective and just think of ourselves as our own microcosm and just take care of ourselves or perhaps our immediate family and that's it and forget about the rest of the world. But that doesn't deliver progress. The truth is, is that we live in our world today with over 8 billion people. And everything that I do, everything that you do, everything that everyone does in this world has an impact on everything else, as much as you're not aware of it, but it does. And so the question that we then have to ask ourselves, you know, what's our responsibility in this world? You know, what is it that we can contribute? And the first thing that I say is we must evolve. We all must evolve to a higher level of consciousness so that we can be more of ourselves, enhance our own potential, or actually, let me rephrase that, um, <clears throat> manifest our own true potential and so that we can be so much more for this country. I'm delighted today because I'm gonna, we're gonna be talking to this amazing woman who comes from Europe and has undergone incredible experiences that I can't even imagine <clears throat> what those are like. But the truth is, is that she's used this and she's using this as what she calls being a change architect. She is inspired by others that are changing the world around us in the best possible way. And she's also an amazing instrument in the world that we have here in the United States in inspiring and coaching others to be part of that process of sustainability in this world. And so I want to welcome this amazing woman, Hildana, on this platform, Prescription for Your Transformation, that place where people have a voice so that you can discover different ways to approach our global citizenship. So thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. And it's a privilege to be here with you. Well, it truly is a privilege for myself and everyone else listening because it's all about perspective. And the truth is, is that when we don't, when we limit our perspectives of the world around us, then we also limit, you know, our contribution to the world, but more importantly, our own evolution. And so I would, ha would have to admit, I mean, it's unfortunate that you went through what you went through, but look at you today and being that architect, being that thought leader so that other people can be inspired to change for the better. Thank you. Well, I, I try my best. Yeah, well, we, we can look at events in our life from a negative standpoint. We can see ourselves as victims or we can kind of meditate on it a little bit and use that energy for the common good. So it's totally uh, up to us. So I'd like to talk first about your concept of global citizenship, because I, I absolutely love that concept. And then talk a little bit about your personal story, because I think that's relevant for people to appreciate, you know, what they have in their life and actually what they can do with all the advantages that they have that you didn't have to get to where you are today. 
So what's the concept that you have about global citizenship? Why is it important? And perhaps even let us know a little bit about your involvement with the United Nations. Yeah, sure. Well, I firmly believe that, you know, alone we can do so little and together we can do so much. Um, at a very young age, as a young teenager, I, my, my life took a drastic turn and I went overnight, literally overnight from being daddy's little princess and um, enjoying my school and my all various activities to overnight being homeless, stateless, countryless. And um, just with our clothes on our bodies, passport and uh, going, uh, I didn't know where that day when we were escaping the war. And um, so at a young age, I, I, for me, uncertainty became like a norm. I know people nowadays, oh my gosh, try to avoid uncertainty or planning, doing everything. But for me, uncertainty was a way of life. And um, going through being a refugee, uh, the word that I don't like to use, but uh, it is what, what happened. Um, I realized that the world is, is so small, actually, that we can the the nations don't matter that the borders don't matter i was stateless i didn't even my home country was falling apart so um four four years later uh, i was still a young teenager and i finished high school in germany and i decided to go back to a war torn country um after the day four years i haven't been I didn't see my dad, didn't see any of my family members. Um, and then I, um, United Nations was there, NATO, they were trying to rebuild everything. And I found myself working with United Nations and um, it was um, quite define, life-defining experience to work with people from all over the world. And um, so that, that really shaped me, um, not only culturally, but also intellectually and of course professionally so that that i realized at a young age that we're all one that we're all interconnected and that we need to be there for each other so if there is a war happening in a country or any crisis like we have right now in puerto rico we have to be there we have to help each other it doesn't matter you know if it's united states or if it's bosnia or if it's germany so as a global citizen um, we should have our feet planted in our country, but we should always have our eyes on the world. And it is our responsibility to, to be connected. And, and here's what's true about that, because, um, you know, one of the, our own six human needs, and, and people are familiar with the world of Tony Robbins, is that we have six behavioral <clears throat> human needs, one of which is contribution, and that's more of a spiritual need. And we have experienced more fulfillment in our life, you know, when we can contribute. Here's the truth about contribution. It can happen in so many different ways. And I think what happens too often, unfortunately, people realize, well, Puerto, Puerto Rico is, um, is an island that's far away and I'm completely disconnected mm -hmm. with it and I'm not going to do anything about it. And the truth is, you know, we all can. And if, if we started focusing on, on what's right in the world, what's possible in the world, and I think that's the direction that you're going in with all the work that you do, is this world could be so much different. And you brought an interesting topic up earlier on, which I'm so glad that, that you're going to be talking about it. And it's all about, and it's things that I believe in, it's all about education and mobility. And you clearly had a lot of education and a lot of mobility. Even coming from a place of being at a disadvantage, you were still able to get the education that you wanted and still have that mobility to share with us you know, how you feel that the young today can be educated and can be mobile at the same time. Well, I, I, f I consider myself you know, as a citizen of the world and I believe that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Uh, I know in some countries we just think, okay, education is there, so we maybe don't appreciate it. However, in many parts of the world, people don't have access to education. So um, 
I, I also have, um, a, when I was a refugee, what my mother told me every day is uh, education is something no one can take away from you. So because we had everything, literally everything taken away from us. We had, you know, no passport, no, no home, no country, nothing. We couldn't go anywhere. So as I said earlier, uncertainty became like a way of life. It was a norm. When something is certain, when something is going to happen, I mean, I would start to worry. I'm like, is this really real? Mm -hmm. So, so that was one way thing. And then the other way, the other, so to say, strategy to, to, to deal with this adversity of, of being uh, in a war is that um, education is something nobody can take. It can be, it cannot be taken away from you. So your country can be taken away from you. Your father can be taken away from you, your children, your spouse, whatnot. But education is something that belongs only to you. And I don't mean just formal education. I also believe that um, self-study. So um, I also teach at the university that teach corporate responsibility. And um, what I always tell my student is one of the biggest attributes of these successful businessmen is that they're very curious. They always learn. They want to invent. They want to new, do new things. So I would say that, you know, curiosity is something that really, really helped me. I would be in the libraries every day reading books about Eastern philosophy, reading books about political geography, trying to understand the world, because here I was in Germany, in a beautiful country, very safe, going to school every day. And then just a few hundred kilometers away from there, my country was falling apart in the heart of Europe. So um, it took me years to, to, to kind of understand. So for better or for worse, all those different incidents in my life to call them um have made me who i am today and um the way i responded it was it was based on those uh beliefs that my my mother told me and one of them was that education something nobody can take it from you you know it's interesting you talk about education and i think most people think very lightly about education today and and quite frankly don't even have the, the proper appreciation of what education is. Education is not just going to school and learning a bunch of topics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's knowledge is a, is in power anymore, but it's how to apply that knowledge and how to implement, you know, your own um, either emotional intelligence or you know IQ or, or whatever into making changes in the world today. And yeah. if if we just spent more time educating our children, but more importantly, as you mentioned. Also educating ourselves in our own personal growth, mm -hmm. in our in our own personal evolution, because what happens too often, particularly in the world today, in the world of politics and religion or whatever, is there's so much judgment based out of ignorance, mm -hmm. and it just gets yeah. us all into trouble. And you know, the truth is, is that there's a lot out there that's scary, and so mm -hmm. we fight against it in one way or another but all of it comes from our own personal ignorance and i'm not criticizing that it's just that we can do so much better if yeah. we just educate ourselves if we evolve so you're absolutely right you've always said education is the key to our personal success in, in life and in the world if we just spend more time getting the right kind of education and what yeah. you did obviously you know reading all the books makes makes a huge difference um, that saved me you know, because I believe that when people go through very negative experience in their life, um, they become like natural fighters. So you can either be a positive fighter or you can be, mm. a, you know, you can be constructive or destructive. And um, from what I believe that our life, the way we live, what we talk, what we read, what we create um, is our message to the world. And, you know, my responsibility as a global citizen to make sure that that message is inspiring. Because I was exposed to inspiring people at a young age and I wanted to be like them. I was maybe lucky. And I believe if people are going through negative experience, like I can't blame them. They want revenge. They get triggered easily uh, because they feel injustice was done to them. Right. 
I felt injustice was done to me. When I came to the United States to go to college, when I arrived in, in beautiful Miami University campus, which is the quintessential American university, and it was in, in Ohio, and you know everyone is so nice and friendly, and we want to say hi, and I, everyone is rich, all those kids arriving in their fancy cars and here I am. I mean, I didn't even have money to buy a suitcase. I had like a little duffel bag and I, I was shocked. I was, I found myself being triggered. Like, oh, this is unfair. They have everything. Their parents can visit. They have all the money. They can go out. They can go shopping. All the girls, they look pretty with beautiful clothes. And I did not have any of that. So I started comparing myself and I was triggered and it took a long time to learn. And one of my big lessons is never to compare yourself to others because you are unique. And um, so I think that, that you know, our emotions, our, our beliefs, and if we go through negative experience, I know how it feels. We just have to kind of trick our mind to say, hey, you know, instead of reacting, mm-hmm in a negative way, we have to use that energy and channel it for positive things. It's not easy, but um, it can be done. (laughs) So I have a question for you. What's success for you? What's success? It's having a positive uh, influence, positive impact on your, not just, like it can be in your community, in your country, in your nation, globally. Uh, definitely having the power of influence is for me success. If you can reach that, I, you know, but everyone has a different definition of success. And I found my definition of success changes over time. But overall, generally speaking, is to, for myself, is to have a impact, have a positive influence or someone or something. Very nice. Um, and I have to agree with that. My um, the word term I like to use is called emotional currency. It's a brilliant right. term that I, I learned from a brilliant guy by the name of Steve Linder from Strategic Brain. And my emotional currency, what really gets me you know, excited um, and, and teary-eyed oftentimes is to see somebody else succeed, uh, particularly mm-hmm. against you know major adversity. And, and you see that most often in these athletes in Olympic Games to do these incredible mm-hmm. things. But it's not only that, it's every mm. part of life when you see somebody succeed and be the hero in their own life. Mm. Um, I think it's huge. Um, I, I like to add something about what you just said and then jump into you know, how you do the work that you do today. Um, you're consulting with uh, Vildana's Choice and being a, a, um, a change architect. But just one thing I want to add to what you shared earlier on about comparing. Mm-hmm. And I was also challenged with that for a while, and I think many people are, and I resolved that very easily, and I resolved that by, by doing a different comparison, and the comparison was, where was I before and where am I now, and where mm-hmm. do I want to be, and when I would look at other people and see what they had, that was just a standard of where mm-hmm. I wanted to be, because there's no way I could compare with them because I had no idea what was else in their life. I only knew what was in my life. And if the standard was to have you know, a certain amount of wealth, whatever, however you want to define that, wealth and abundance can be defined in so many different ways. But yeah. I would look at other people and say, okay, that's my standard, that's where I want to go, so that's my gap. So I know where I came from, I know where, I, where I'm at today, and I know where I want mm. to go. And it made my life so much easier then because it didn't make me more or less than anybody else. Yeah. And it was just, this is the direction that I want to go to. And I just want to share that. But in your case, you know, you came from the corporate world. You've got extensive education, which is absolutely brilliant in different countries as well, uh, which is awesome in, in, in London and in Milan and then here in the United States. And so that earns you the right, you know, to do what you do from a global sense but also you work in corporate America and now you have your own business. And, and I really respect what you're doing today because more people need to have this approach because what's wrong in life is always available, but also what's right. You know, what's not possible in this world is always available, but what is also possible. And what's possible is sustainability. 
and mm. and you don't have to be a tree hugger to think about sustainability. You know, you can also make money as you're doing it and making this world a better place. And that's called conscious capitalism, conscious mm. leadership, you know, green leadership, green capitalism, whatever you want to call it. Capitalism, in essence, is an important part because we still have to make money. You know, we still yes. have, you know, the the well, monetary dollar. system. Yes, dollar, exactly. The color of a dollar bill is green. So. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit, you know, how, how, what is your approach or what is your strategy or what is it that you do so that anybody who has a company out there um, can find you and, and knows what um, they can expect from you as, you know, their consultant or their coach? Well, the same way, like I said, that um, as an individual, I'm responsible to have a positive impact on the world. That same thing can be reframed for a company. I believe. Uh, I mean, I've studied economics and I work in a business consulting. So I believe that company, yeah, cannot function if you don't make money. But at the same time, you can add more value to, to your community, to the environment, and um, do so many positive things that where you can change other people's life and where you can address global issues that we are facing today. So um, when I finished college, I started to work with Accenture, which is a consulting company. Um, and we, I traveled all over the world. And um, I was really bored working in my office 12 hours, sometimes 15, sometimes 18 hours. And I want, was looking like, what else is this big corporation doing? What, what, are the pro, what are the programs? I was, I mean, 25 at the time. And then I heard for the first time about this term called corporate social responsibility. And I was fascinating that they do so many different programs where one of the programs that I had to get involved with was uh, going to Africa where you promise that you're going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, you take a pay cut, you go to Africa and you ma climb Mount Kilimanjaro and you raise funds for, um, for Africa. And I was like, wow, this sounds much more exciting than uh, sitting in my client site. You know, I can go to Africa, I can meet those children, I can visit all the villages and see what is really there. So I did not even think about it. I signed up right away as soon as I read that. And that really inspired me. And I, I even today, there's so many amazing companies that do incredible things. I mean, and individuals, business owners, they're philanthropic. But what I, that inspired me to um, create my own consulting company and uh, help my clients thrive ahead of competition for long term and establish their own corporate social responsibility policy. They don't have it now, if they want, so I can help them with them how to get involved, if it's just in their community or internationally or abroad, or even for their employees. Uh, I think implementing like a wellness program where your employees can go on a retreat, where they meditate, do yoga, I think even that shows a corporate responsibility and, um, adds a whole new dimension to the culture of that company. But um, so our clients, they, they focus on the ma maximum impact uh, for the environment and for the communities, and they offer sustainable and innovative solutions. Um, innovation plays a big, big part. I believe nowadays we are so advanced. We have all this technology, we have all these tools, cameras, lives, and whatnot, but I believe that technology is using us more than we are using technology. So there are so many apps that are incredible. They're amazing. Like there's an app for meditation. There is an app to track your steps, um, um, that you can measure how much you sleep. Those are the apps that, that you know, I promote and that type of technology to actually improve our well-being instead of other ways. Like people complaining, oh, I can't sleep. Yeah, you can't sleep because you have your phone in your bed. So uh, I think over time, technology, we have become slave to technology and um, instead of the opposite. So that's why innovation, there is so much, so many other tools that you can use to um, make a difference in the world and make yourself a better, healthier well-being. And that's another mission. And 
overall, we want to accelerate the culture shift towards a healthier, more sustainable lifestyle with an eye on future generation. And that we do by empowering consumers and making impactful businesses more successful. Or if you don't have a strategy how to be impactful business, then we will help you how to come up with one. So I have one last question as, as we wrap it up. And this may be a tough question to ask you, um, but it's a question that I'm, I'm very curious. And you know, what's the reason um, well, let me rephrase that. Um, <clears throat> do you find in general people um, that there's a general unwillingness to participate in this kind of process of uh, being more creative, more generative? And if that's the case with that unwillingness, what do you think that the hurdle is? You know, what do you think is the main challenge for people to think outside of themselves so that oh. they can, you know, uh, contribute beyond themselves? I mean, what do you think that is? I, you know, I, I agree with you that there is a notion of people that they, you know, uh, why do I have to care about others? Why do I, for me, for my case, that's why I'm very, very, very grateful for all the events that happened in my life because it gave me a whole new dimension looking at the world and it gave me so much empathy and drive and um, desire and, and passion. So, um, maybe people are just numb they're disconnected they how and how can they get connected um i mean i don't know it, it takes a lot of time it takes probably depending on case to case maybe they have to travel get out there experience go to um a crisis place like now in puerto rico go there and feel that feel the fear feel the smell the 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 the, the um the fear, you know, and, and I think when you face that, that will give you a whole new perspective. Um, and, but then again, I, I, I don't justify that. I think we're all like, we see a lot of stuff happening. We have access to information. There's no excuse not to get involved. There's no excuse not to be conscious. I, I think it is not only a responsibility, but it's our duty especially in the Western world. And, and I would agree with that. And, and the truth is, is that <clears throat> there are so many different ways that you can help. And quite frankly, I mean, this is what I do. I mean, my way to help the world is by having this platform. You know, it's all my time. You know, I, I don't charge anybody for anything of this. And, and I just get excited by promoting everybody else and, and, and with the hopes that when people listen to these interviews today or in the future, you know, they identify with interviewees like yourself. They resonate, you know, with your gifts, with your talents, with your passion, and then say, you know what, I really want to connect with you. Really yeah. want to find out more about you. Please help me, you know, become more, you know, responsible socially with my my corporation. Yeah. I mean, what a beautiful thing. Because what I'm finding is that oftentimes it's what people don't know that they don't know that's going to make the difference. Mm. And that's that was my case in essence because. I came from a different, completely different background. Um, pretty much, you know, very, very lucky my entire life. Uh, no real major trauma except, you know, my mom when I was 18, <clears throat> just entered medical school. Then she was in a very bad car accident, but it wasn't something oh. that, in that sense, affected me yeah. directly like it affected you, you know, in your country. Mm. I didn't have to run away. I didn't have to hide. I didn't have to do any mm. of these things. Yeah. Um, but it was the spark that said, okay, great. And now I need to take all the privilege I've had in my life and find a way to give, give back, you know, what, what I've gotten. And, and everybody has a different reason, different perspective, different drive, yeah. and different passion. And that's true. But the truth is, and you said it so eloquently earlier before, is that, you know, we can all work together yeah. and we can do so much more together. And if we just did that, you know, if we, you know, we just work side by side, our neighbors says, hey, you know what, what can we do right now? You know, yes. and, 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 and make the life in this world yeah. uh, a much better place. So I really want to thank you for today. Thank um, you. <laughs> I'm Dr. Bart Ryan, I make a prescription for your transformation, real people, real conversations, real success, um, talking to a thought leader and change architect, uh, an amazing mm -hmm. story, an amazing passion. And so if people want to reach out to you, how do they find you? 
Well, you can use the Facebook. I have my uh, Facebook page out there. Um, I can also provide, um, I don't know if you have show notes or maybe I can comment with my email address. Yes, if anyone has any questions, uh, would be more than glad to answer and get in touch with anyone. Perfect. So I'm very uh, privileged and honored to be talking to you today. And so I would like to give you the opportunity to share some words of wisdom uh, for any of our listeners. Some words of wisdom. Well, um, as I said earlier, you know, alone, we, we live in a, in a fear-driven culture. There is fear everywhere. I mean, we're bombarded uh, with information. We're bombarded with, with news. And, um, but we're all starving for, for wisdom. We're all you know, there to help each other. And I think that, that alone, we can do so little. And together, we can do so much more. And let's turn this fear energy into love energy so we can uh, make this world a much better place. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Gildana. Once thank again, you. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher. And thank you so much. And I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.